for us and honor you with our lives. So use this vessel before you and open our ears to hear your voice and be strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and to be together again. And for me to see these faces that I was used to, which I don't see every Sunday now, but I was used to them. But you get words of wisdom from Wananchi. You know those two people there, Lucy and uh, Albert, the other day I met them and they told me that uh, whenever they are in Kiabu County, this is their local church, when they are in this county. And I also felt, yeah, when I'm in Kiabu County, why don't I also make it my church? <laughs> when I'm in Kiabu County. So, so any time I'm allowed in, in Kiabu County, I think this is what I'll be coming. I have my, my local church in my home county, which is Mulanga. But Kiabu County is my resident county. So when I'm in my resident county, I think I should be popping in. That was good of you, Albert and Lucy. You know, give me some good tips. Well, welcome, the people who have been abroad. <laughs> so we are glad to have with us uh, our level head and also our, our secretary. They are, back in the, they are back in Kenya, in East Africa. At least they have been out of East Africa, both of them. And now they're in East Africa, so we're happy to have them with us. So Karibu Nisana, happy to be part of each other. So today, therefore, we are looking at unwavering, unwavering hope, and uh, today in particular, we do the unwavering hope uh, in God. So let's start by finding out what is hope, because really, uh, we need to know what are we talking about. And I think hope, uh, from a very, uh, very ordinary talk, will be something expected, that which you do not have yet but something that you are looking forward to. In other words, it's something that uh, is not with you yet, but something that you are, hope, you are looking forward to. I was about to say hoping to get, but something that you are looking forward to get, because it's not there yet. So you are looking forward to getting it sometime. And we find that in the Bible, Paul was talking about it. Please, if you can put for me what Paul is telling us about that one. Uh, he's talking about that uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in Romans chapter 8, uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, 24 to 25. That's where now Paul is kind of telling us, you know, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. So we're talking about what you have not seen. It's something yet to come. Uh, you have not seen it. For what a man seeth, why does he yet have hope for? So in other words, if you're saying, I'm hoping one day to have a nice suit like I'm wearing now, but you already have it, so that's not hope. But if I'm saying that one day, uh, the Lord blessing me, I'm going to put on this kind of, you know, a kauda suit for, for those of you who like kauda suits. That's what I'm saying, a day will come. Now that is hope, because I don't have it. But the day that I have the kauda suit, then it's no longer hope anymore. You know, when I've been here in the university uh, as chaplain and uh, dean of students, I've dealt with quite a number of students, and the students tell me their hopes, where they're hoping to go. So one of them who is a brother in the Lord <clears throat> told me, I'm looking forward to becoming a millionaire. That was his hope, to be a millionaire. So recently I talked to him and asked him, brother, are you still looking forward to being a millionaire? No, but I made the million a long time ago, so, so I'm no longer looking forward to being a millionaire. So I guess now he's thinking about being a billionaire because a million he made. So the minute you have made it, then that time is no longer hope. So hope according to Paul, who we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? That's 25. What does 25 say? Uh, but if we hope that for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So in other words, the addition to it about hope is that something that you patiently wait for. So it's not something that just crops up. Because if it just crops up, then most probably that's not hope. So hope therefore, ladies and gentlemen, is something that you do not have and something that you look forward to, something you're expecting and you're hoping, you're not hoping, but you're saying one of the days uh, we are going to get something. It's going to come your way. So it is that which we expect at a future date. And usually a positive thing, not a negative one. 
Very few of us are really hoping to be poor one day. Very few of us. How many of us are hoping to be poor? I don't think they are there. Not many of us are hoping to be sick someday. Because they're saying, God, I hope to be sick someday. But all the time, time they're saying, Lord, I'm looking forward to that. You know, something positive. So hope normally we go with something positive. What is its place in the Bible? When you go to the Bible, there's so much about hope. So many words, I mean, not so many verses describe hope, talk about hope, uh, about this and the other. But there's positive hope and negative hope. Positive hope is when you are looking forward to things which really are pleasing in the eyes of God. Not just in your own eyes, but in the eyes of God. For example, now Simeon, in the book of Luke, I think it's Luke uh, chapter number 2. Yeah, I think it's Luke chapter number 2. If you go there, there was this man called Simeon from verse 25. Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. You find there is this Simeon. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Verse 26 tells us what finally happened. Uh, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that you would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So it's something you are looking forward to. And the Spirit had told him, Ah, ah, kukufa wewe, dying, you are not dying. Until you see that hope, you are not dying. Until you see that which you are looking forward to. So that's really uh, a positive one. That we are really looking forward to something very positive. Uh, it's, we are not being uh, selfish in any way. There was no selfishness in this one. But the apostles, on the other hand, were a little selfish. If you go to the book of Acts, chapter number 1, and verse, uh, uh, verse number 4, uh, verse, I think from verse number 8, uh, there they are making some verse, yeah. There they are making some some questions uh, to Jesus of the hope that they had, and this is the hope too to me. I call, I call negative hope because it's a bit selfish. Uh, they were thinking about themselves. That's verse number five. Uh, verse number five. When they therefore were come together, you know now they had been Jesus Christ for three years plus, and their hope was one day Peter will be the president of Israel. So he was just looking forward to it. One day, I'm going to be something. You know? So now, that to me is, is negative because in the sense that it's more about yourself. So when they therefore come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will you, will thou at this time, thank you for King James, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? In other words, here we are now. Are you, now we are ready. Is this the time? Is it time for us to be something? So there is that what you consider to be negative hope in the sense that you're hoping things just for yourself, not necessarily for what uh, God has in mind for you. And I like the way Jesus answered him in my own words when I paraphrase it. He says, none of your business. Is that what it says? <laughs> Verse 7. And he said, it's none of your business. Oh, okay. Let, let's do King James. He said, it's not for you to know for the times of the season which the Father had put in his own power. So don't concentrate on this. It's none of your business, please. That's not yours. But your business is very simple, verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. That's what I'm calling you for. So that, to me, is a bit of negative uh, a hope, where you're just hoping for yourself that come one day, I'm going to be this or the other, uh, but not necessarily uh, with, the, with the God in mind, with God's glory in mind. It's more about you, more about yourself. But still going back to the whole issue of uh, hope in the Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 13. Is it to remember 13, 13? We have what's going on there now. And, and Paul is telling us there are three very important things in life. So I'm trying to say that hope is an important thing in life. So there are three I now and now abided which one? Faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest is charity, or the greatest is love. But the point here is out of the three important things in life, hope is one of them. Praise the Lord. So he says, hope is one of the things that you need in life. For you to be able to work very well. You need that. So he says, you need faith, you also need 
hope, you also need charity. The three of them are about to be there. And faith now has been, uh, I mean, faith has now been, hope has been given uh, in first in uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 11. When you go there, it's telling us, telling us what faith is. It says, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. So hope again appears there. Evidence of things that you are hoping to. So faith and hope, they seem to go together. In fact, when you go to read the, the Romans, you are going to read the moment, we see them again together. The two of them seem to be tired. That hope and faith seem to go together. So in other words, if you are really looking forward to something, then there must be something also to accompany that. And that's what now faith comes in. See that faith, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things that you are hoping for. So you have that hope, something you are looking forward to, then you need something to boost it. Uh, and then when you come to Romans, now it's the other way. It is now hope of faith which comes to boost faith, hope. But we are saying that hope is a biblical uh, concept. And not just, a, not just there for us to see, but something for us to practice. In other words, they are really feeling, the Bible says that that is something that we need to work on. That faith is part of us, that there is quite a place of it, in, of it in the Bible, and a lot of it. As you go through the Bible, there's going to be plenty of it that you are going to see, which you can look at. So that is in the Bible. So the Bible says, yes, we need hope. Because without hope, by the way, the minute you are hopeless, the next thing you think about is suicide. Because you wonder now, why, why am I here? I mean, if I have no hope, why am I here? So most of the people who have committed suicide, if you had a chance to interview them just before, I mean, they, they have nothing to live for. So the worst you can tell somebody is that you are hopeless. So please don't tell somebody is hopeless. Because you tell somebody he is hopeless, and basically what you are telling him, this world does not need you. That's basically what you are telling somebody, that this world does not need you. And I don't think that's how it is. So the Bible... I'm trying to stress that from the definition of the word, from definition to what the Bible has for us in the, in about hope, is that there's so much of it in the Bible, and he encouraged to have it. But what about the place of hope today? Why well, would you need hope today? Why do I need hope today? Maybe that is important. Why do I need hope today? And I think for me to need hope today, give me my water. That's part of hope. <clears throat> At least that's my thirst will go. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. So, why do we need hope today? And somebody has put it this way. When I look down, I get depressed. When I look aloud, I get oppressed. Now, the world we are in right now is Looks like there's no hope anywhere around you. What our Reverend has just quoted to us. Friday, I, I was in Juja. I, was, I found the petrol was 182. Today, I came to Juja, it's 185.5. What percentage is that? That's quite a high percentage. Yeah? It's supposed to be 8%, but I'm trying to calculate things in my head and it looks like more than 8% because somebody must take advantage of it when there's that increase. Now, you look aloud, my friend will get depressed. I mean, I mean how, how do I survive? So you look at who can I turn to? And when you turn to the people, just over a week ago, we had a very truthful man, a very honest man. <laughs> and sometimes doing honest is dangerous. So the honest man, student was asked by the students here. Kazi, what jobs? Says I'm a truthful man. <laughs> I'm an honest man. There are no jobs. <laughs> now that's being truthful. <laughs> that's being honest. Now, if I'm going with that one, then where is the hope? <laughs> I mean, you know, in the yesterday years, uh, this young man seems to talk about like yesterday, yes, when he was there, though I'm not sure you are. But in the days we have great, we had a great president here called President Daniel Alap Moy. And these days, there used to be a song. So many Vijana, Badaya Masukusoma, Tapata Kazbzuri Zana, 
That was a song that time. So we are struggling to so many vizuri to part a kazi. But now a very honest man. <laughs> <laughs> and very truthful. <laughs> so that's, that's no work. So if your hope is in work, my friend, I think you are in trouble. That could be trouble. Then we hope that since we have leaders who are able to lead us, they might lead us into green pastures, into some water. But I've been watching, I've been watching the last couple of days. In the last couple of days, I watched Parliament, National Assembly. And they were to vote on a bill called the Finance Bill. So I was hoping that they are going to use their head. Somebody saying, according to what I think, my head. I vote yes or I vote no. So I watched one of them vote. And the time came when you didn't have to ask what they would vote for. All you needed to know was what is their name or what is their party affiliation. It had nothing to do with what they believe or don't believe. Now I said, now, if these are the people we are counting on, that here you are, you are saying they are leading us to water, to the water. But somebody says, no, are you for the, for the bill? I vote no for my people in whatever. You, know, you pretend it's for your people. But actually, it has nothing to do with your people. It has something to do with who told you to say so. Now, that I say now, look, if that is the hope, look around, you are depressed. Honestly, I mean, if that's what's going to happen, you look around and you'll be depressed. Then I thought maybe because they talk of an upper house, you know, there's a lower house and an upper house. So there's one where they consider themselves to be the upper house, now called the Senate. So I said, maybe Senate has a bit more sense when you come to this, when you come to issues where they are voting with their head, with their conscience. Then I waited until the week, this is week in, the last week now, and there was an impeachment motion against some deputy governor somewhere. So we thought now they are going to look at what are the facts. But there's no issue of fact at all. It's a question of my party says. So this chap called Oduol was saved by the bell, and this time, because there was KK, KK means Kenya Kwanza, in case you don't know. Because KK said, no, we must protect that fellow. Why you protect him? Don't worry. We have been told to do that. Then the other team was saying, the fellow must go. The fellow, the now called, uh, what is the other one called? AKA, -A AKO. Uh, what is it? A Azimio Kenya one, yeah, AKO. So AKU was saying, no, the fellow must go. So it's not a question of you as a person, but we as a, as a group. I mean, you look around and then say, then where are we? <laughs> what is it? Is there any hope? Then you listen to the scandals. One is made a minister, and within one year, actually, how many? they have not done a year yet. With those few months, one is able to afford about 100 million. Where from? I mean, even if your salary was a million, and you have not been eating at all. You have just been keeping the side. <laughs> You're talking about 80 million. That's what you would have had by now. You know, we not eating, just keeping it aside for a day to day. But you have a 100 million somewhere. Now, where from? I mean, so you listen to scado upon scado. Then you say, my God. Now, when I look down, I'm depressed. When I look aloud, I'm oppressed. I mean, because... I, Humanly speaking, there seems to be no hope at all. That's basically the, the picture I'm trying to paint. That really, we seem to have quite some, some problem. Whether you call it stage capture, whatever you want to call it, which used to be, what used to be told before, uh, whatever it is. So, we are saying, therefore, when we see where we are, humanly speaking, we don't seem to be getting very far. If now you have to put that kind of money for your fuel, that's quite a challenge. But more than that, because that one you can always take care of one way or the other. You can walk. We were advised the other day uh, from Kamkuj. We were told it's very simple. We start walking now. Uh, so I'm trying to imagine how I walk from my county, home, uh, county to here. It's quite difficult. Then we were told the other option is Matatos now. You take double capacity uh, so that now you take care. You don't add the, don't add the the, the fear, but take double capacity, the police should not stop you. Is that hope? I'm not so much, I'm not so sure there's much hope in that. But anyway, 
That, that's one on the side. There is the, the, the personal conflict. Personal conflicts in the sense that now you are looking at yourself and the things going on around you as a person. And you're starting saying, is there hope for me? And that really is more worrying. Outside, the outside hope, that's okay. I mean, outside us, maybe what can handle. But inside us, when you look at it, you got to come to your own home. Your own home. I hope it's not in this church. But so much of abuse taking place between husbands and wives. The wife is so abused that now she turns to depression because that's the option. The husband is so abused that now, according to our brother Donga, he goes, to, well, that's the Bible, he goes to the, to the corner of the roof to hide there. And according to Donga, even the bats don't enjoy being there. <laughs> but, but now we have a number of men, I hope not in this church, who are at, at that corner there. And they are wondering now, what do I do at this point, in this corner? And the wives are now wondering now, what do I do? This fellow is so abusive, physical, there's still quite a bit of physical among Christians, and quite a, but most of it emotional. That really, I mean, you come home and you are made to look useless. And there's nothing as bad as being made useless, look useless, because there you feel hopeless. And that's when I feel that the best thing for me to, is to die. Because, I mean, I would rather die. Do you remember there's another fellow in parliament who said, I would rather die than design. No, he's still alive, by the way. <laughs> he, he resigned and he's still alive. Uh, but then we are told after that, I think that this is public, public knowledge, so it's not uh, uh, anything against. We are told that now he got into very, very serious depression because now the, his hope was minister. Now you say, I'll rather die than resign, but you still are forced to resign. So at the end of the day, hopeless. So I'm told he became so depressed that one of the big people in the country, no names again, but I'm sure it's in the public domain, had to finally desert him. Because, well, since you're in depression, I don't deal with depressed people. So she took off. So that's happening every day. So if that is the case, then what are you going to do we are, when we feel so desperate and so hopeless? So I'm put, trying to, put, uh, to, uh, to paint a picture uh, of uh, that. It is possible that when you look around where you are, there's no cause for hope at all. None at all. You don't see where, how you can have any hope because things are, are not working out well. So instead, therefore, you look for alternatives which normally are not very good alternatives. For men, one of the alternatives they go for is the, the bottle. So I'm sure you have come across many people who are going through the bottle. And when they are going through the bottle, you ask them why? Hopeless. They were working, and now they have been sacked because their of you. Is it called their of you? De, de, de Lalu. Because Dela oh yeah, that's something like that. Because Dela Lu has now closed down. So now that it has closed down, we lay off everybody. So what's my hope? Assuming you are there at 35 years old, and in your mind you are working towards 61, you are going to retire. So you had under 25 years, but you are laid off. Where is my hope? Don't one like me who was for the first time in 50 years being jobless. For the first time in 50 years, I'm now jobless. But, but, but for me, it's a time has come, I do it. I mean, I was looking forward to it today. One day I'll be hope, jobless, not hopeless, jobless. So, but, but here you are 35 and, and you are jobless. Then you do feel things are not working. So that's when now we have to turn to something else. Because we are saying, uh, as long as we are going to look for other alternatives, which are not Christian, because most of these alternatives are not Christian. When somebody turns to the bottle, that is not a Christian thing. And I would encourage, that's why you need a lot of mentorship for somebody to work with you. But that's happening quite a bit. So that being the case, then where are we then? And that's when then you have to sing the song, my hope is, don't nothing less. <clears throat> I dare not. Anomi, where are you? I thought I saw Anomi. 
on Christ the solid. Oh, other glory. Hey, Mrs. Simon. Oh, other glory, sinking sad. Let's sing that song. Let's start up and sing the song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the soul. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, if that's the case, then you have to build some confidence. We have to build some hope. Because we look aloud, there's trouble. We have to build some hope. That's when I got to Romans chapter number five, so that we build some hope, so we get into a process of hope building. Uh, uh, Romans chapter five. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing, the starting, the starting point. We are justified by faith. And so because of that, then we have, we have peace with God. However, we need to go ahead and build some peace. So verse number two, starting us how we are going to build some hope. By whom also we have access by faith to this grace, wherein we start and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So here... Paul is telling us, <laughs> we need grace. When, ma when things are like this, we need grace. Because without grace, we are done. I mean, if all around us, all, all other ground is sinking sad, just like the ship which was sinking, yeah? uh, like the Titanic. If Titanic is sinking, if my, ta 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 if my Titanic is sinking, my Titanic, so you told us about, so about our Titanic. So if my Titanic is sinking, I mean, Yesterday, somebody called me and told me there are some people in Jombo Kenyatta <clears throat> with a master's degree and they are on grade one. You know, grade one is the lowest because, I mean, you can't go lower than grade one. Eh? You know, in, in primary school, yes, you can go to lower than that. You, there is a play unit. Uh, but but in, in employment, grade one is the lowest. Here you are with your titanic of a master's and you are grade one. Then where is your hope? So that's why now we are turning this one. Now, Paul tells us we need grace to be able to build hope. 
And this is the grace that we need to continue. So he's telling us in verse number two that we need grace uh, to be able to build hope and to, to, to start. And that's also what we find. Uh, uh, it's, it's all over the place. We have fight it all over, but this particular verse is telling us that we need grace to be able to do that. Uh, then we are talking about, for that to happen, a lot of other things are, not, are going on. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Well, building grace, I mean, building hope starts with grace. After that, tribulation will be part of it. And if there's something that many people are fearing, it's where things are not working in your way. Tribulation. And by the way, I want to put it to us, and I think I've said this a hundred times, and this is the end time that I'm saying in the church here, that tribulation usually makes Christians strong, that we're able to know who is a Christian and who is not Christian. Listen to a watch, watching, you know, when you are retired, you have time to watch movies. So I was watching, <laughs> I, I was watching this one by, uh, on, on uh, what, uh, po, Lord, no, not Lord, po, Polycarp, yeah, Polycarp. So Polycarp was there, and as I watched him, and he said, now look, now this is making Christians look Christians. Because they're saying, oh, Empala, what is it that you need from us? Either worship me, or you are going to the stake. The stake is where you put on a stake, the entire is put allowed you, and you are burnt alive. They don't kill you fast. You are going to be burnt alive, so you see your to toes getting burnt, it's, the fire is coming up. Now, at such a point, Either you start for Christ, I say, ah, Jamen, I was there to escort others. You know, and since I was an escort, I mean, the Mashabik. You know, when you're Mashabik, when things happen in the field, you take off because you're not part of it. You know, so you are going to say, no, 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 I think I should take off. But so, actually, not that I wanted persecution to come to Kenya, but if it did, it would really give us who are Christians. This church may have a quarter of what we are now. But those people will be Christians. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so with tribulation is part of hope building. So you start with grace. So the grace now gives you, uh, because tribulation requires grace, you cannot withstand with that. So for you to be able to start, you need, you need grace. Uh, then tribulation, you follow that verse, verse 3. And tribulation will give you patience. That's what it says. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So, as you go through challenges in life, what it's going to do is it's going to harden you and give you patience. You know, when we're talking about uh, uh, a three-month-old baby, I'm saying that because I have a granddaughter who is three months old. Well, when you're three months old, there's nothing to be patient about. You are hungry, you are hungry. Let them as you are. You know, you don't even discuss it. I mean, you are simply saying, I need milk. You know, my boy, I have a son who is a for two one now, and the boy tells me, or rather tells me now, I have matured. So because you no, know, because of that, there are some things I cannot do because you know I'm very organized. Then I remember him a few years ago. <laughs> <coughs> you know, <coughs> just a few years ago we were going on a trip with the university. I mean, we were going on a trip. He was about five years old, four five years old. So when we were going out there. <coughs> The fellow needed to go and relieve himself and you're in the bus. And the bus is not stopping. So you can imagine what happened next. <laughs> the whole bus was smelling. But right now, I mean, I'm sure even if he sat, he has sat here before, but if he sat here today and he really felt he can't do that anymore. He has built some resistance, some patience, you know, because he has gone through issues in life. So I'm talking about us that it's telling us now what we do is that after, after we get the grace, the grace is to enable us to, do, to go through challenges. Then once you have gone through the challenges, then you are able to, to, to develop patience. And once you develop patience, then what comes after that? Verse 4. And patience gives what? Experience. No, it gives experience. So you become an experienced, hardened fellow. You know, when you look at somebody, who has been a Christian for a number of years. He has the experience, or she has the experience. So when small things come, it's like, ah, he or two. Don't worry, we can handle that. You know, a couple of years ago, I was planning to get married, and I went with my father to negotiate, to talk. And then when we went, went there, uh, they said 40,000. 
My father said, Eo too. I looked at him and wondered, are you okay? <laughs> Salary raise that time was 2,000. So I tried to figure out 2,000, that will take me 20 months not eating anything, you know. <laughs> Just looking for that money. But then later when he went out, he told me, no, normally in a place like that, you don't go arguing. First of all, yeah, okay. See, two, 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 we look for it. Of course, after that, when he said so, it dis dis completely disabled them. So they all looked at each other because they were expecting him to argue and say, no, no, we can't do that. That's too much. He didn't argue. You are too, only 40. Of course, I was very embarrassed. But when we went outside, he told me, son, this is how things are done. So that's experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's experience. If I had gone with young people with my age, we would have said, no, that can't happen. <laughs> no, it can't happen. <laughs> but you're saying that when you go through patience, now it gives you experience. And now when you have experience, what do you find that you get? Praise the Lord. Hope finally comes when you have gone through all that. You say, I have hope now that after all this, <clears throat> I have hope where I'm, what I'm going to get. So that really is how we build, how we are going to build a hope. But then, given that scenario, what are we expected now to do? What is our part? What must I do? What is expected of me? Uh, what do I find? What is the Christian approach? And the Christian approach, what we call the evangelical approach, is normally go from, to the Bible, then the Bible informs the situation, not the situation informing the Bible. So here we are going by what does the Bible tell me? What am I supposed to do? So we start with Paul. Paul says, the question of priorities, <clears throat> setting your priorities right. As a Christian, if you are going to have the hope that's expected of us, you get your priorities right. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 19, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 19, <clears throat> so we are talking about hope. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, if for this life only, my hope in Christ is for this life only, brother millionaire, to become a millionaire, then after that, brother billionaire. If that's all my hope among our people, eh? do you know miserable people? Have you come across rules for miserable people? Miserable is a miserable. Because you are miserable. It goes with misery. <clears throat> so we are saying, this is one version, I think another version, uh, maybe an IV, but I like this one, but maybe the other one is the one which says, among our people, we are to most be pitied. I mean, people should pity us when they see us. If only for this hope, for this life. Because what we are talking about here, ladies and gentlemen, is that <clears throat> in the hope of this earth, it's only for a season. It does not last long. I mean, I, ha I have also been watching uh, <clears throat> the first cabinet, how they were. And those days, some of them were such powerful men that when some of them, no names now, but if they stood here now, we, were, we almost saw Jombo Kenyatta starting, as long as that minister is there. Of course, now they are dead, very dead. Then we had the ones of Al Arab Moy. The ones who say, Baba. So you remember those ones? Who would say, Kano, ni mama na? They are not there now, Baba. Wameda. So if my hope was only that, was Kano, and one of them said, Kano is my God, I fled. Waited when he died for Kano to bury him. He had to go to church to be buried by a, a church minister. So if my hope is only on this earth and the world, no, let's not call names, but at least you, you are all aware of the great men and women who have made it so well in life. Where well, otherwise? Then they just said, suddenly, pa, they are gone. Even before they have written a will. At least me, I have written a will, just in case I drop dead now. My will is there, and they know who it is. It's always good to write a will, even if you have only a bicycle. Please write a will about that, bicycle, where the bicycle goes. I think it's important. <laughs> you know, let somebody know where that bicycle should go. But then we are saying many have gone with that like that. So what are we saying? Talk about it. Paul says, if for this life only I have hope in Christ, among all people, I must be pitied. So the Christian approach, therefore, 
is that we must have the right priorities. That's number one. Number two, we are talking about the Christian approach. So number one is that we must have the right priorities. Number two, let us know that there's no challenge which does not have an expiry, does not have an expiry date. There's no challenge which lasts forever. Every challenge has, an, has, a, has, has, has a day when it goes. How long will your challenge last? You may find that your challenge is so big, but how long is it going to last? If the Lord were to give you so many years here on this earth, and in the whole time you are going through that, it is still a very short time. First Peter 4 and verse 7. If somebody can give it to me. Every challenge has an expiry date. So Peter is saying, now the end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-headed. Clear-headed. And discipline for prayer. And discipline here is goes with hope. Because we talked about discipline and, and hope go together. So Peter is saying, look, these things are not going to be there forever. It's not too long. <clears throat> Just a little while. A little while may not necessarily be one week. Because in my day, we used to sing, a few more days, then I must go to see then, you know. So we are going in a few days. That was about 50 years ago. I'm still here. So we are not saying that, um, <laughs> that by its dead is coming, that's going to be tomorrow. In fact, that's what happened in the, the, the Salonians, the Salonian Nicans, who are now saying, when is this thing coming? Because they are saying, Bananada, <clears throat> Bananada, come Lord Jesus. Because they thought, get born again today. Next week, Christ comes back and says, welcome Lord. I'm like, uh uh. Patience to give you uh, to give you hope. So here we are saying every challenge has an expiry date. Do not last forever. So it's good to always know uh, that uh, things are not going to be the trouble is not going to be forever. 1952, a state of emergency was declared in Kenya, and those of us who were there, we saw the kind of things that are going on. So some people benefited a lot from the emergency. Others who are brought down. Now, 63, we get our independence. Now, we turn, the cro we turn it to the other side. So the people who, have losing, who had lost in the other one started now benefiting, or were supposed to. They may not have done exactly that. So that one now, the people who are there now really came with full force. And the, those who are the ones I was talking about the, the, the time of the uh, former first president. But they are not there anymore. Because that's, that's how things keep going. So political formations can come and go. Uh, but when it happens, time change. After that, then we got Kebake. With Kebake came another crop of politicians. They gained a lot with the golden bag and all those other things. They gained a lot, but they also went. After that, we got the younger, the younger Uhuru. He's gone. And now we have another one. His time was also gone. <laughs> Had a car forever. Every, each one of us has to go. So I'm saying, therefore, whatever challenge we have, let's know that it's not lasting forever. A time for it is coming when it must go. So anybody who now thinks that they are doing better than you because of this, never mind their time is also coming. And I'm not saying you pray badly for other people. Pray well for other people all the time, all the time. You know? So, so therefore, I'm saying that any challenge that you have will not last forever. But num point number three, on, we are talking about our response, what you expected of us. Number number three. Every time I ask, what is the worst that can happen? <laughs> what is the worst that can happen in this scenario? In this situation, what is the worst that can happen? What is the worst? So, Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 28. Matthew chapter number 10 and verse number 28, which is also Luke. Uh, Luke, 20, Luke 12 and verse 20, the same verse. He's telling us something here. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So what is the worst that can happen if you have no food? Say kukufa too. I'm not saying you got shakahola. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But the worst that can happen is you die. And if somebody says, I must kill you, 
You tell them, what's the worst that can happen? I just die, nothing more than that. So why fear somebody who can only kill the body? But there's nothing else they can do after that. They can burn the body, do what, burn it, whatever they want to do. But the soul, they have nothing to do with it. So again, on the issues of priority, let's take it that our hope more of more is on the on the soul than the body because the body can come and go and you come and go for sure. So we are saying uh, the worst that can happen is can happen is death. So in that case, then, since we have a bigger hope than just here. Bigger hope than just the material things here. You know, we always make a joke that um, uh, for most of us, we don't mind Christ coming back. But for those who are marrying next week, you tell them Christ comes back and I say, no. I just come, come after. Come. Faith, praise the Lord. <laughs> now, if you do have faith that you want the Lord to come back, he says, yeah, that's okay, God, come back. But give me a chance, I mean, only a few weeks and I'm married. Praise the Lord, nothing wrong with that. But we are saying <laughs> it is good that to know that we have something higher than that. I think that's what I'm trying to get at, uh, that we need to, uh, to think about something higher than that. So for that, then what do we need to do? We need to have our faith anchored, our lives anchored on God and his promises. Uh, that's the Romans chapter 4. Verse 20 to 25. We need to have, we talk about the Christian approach to hope and hopelessness. We need to have our life anchored on Christ uh, and his promises. So that now, since I know he has promised me something, my hope will continue on that. So the confidence, therefore, must respond to challenges. My confidence must uh, respond to challenges in a Christian way. So I'm put in a fix. And I'm told, this is the situation, this is where we are. So then what do I need to do? Uh, since we are saved by hope, that's Romans 8 and verse 24, then my hope is to give me the confidence and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Uh, for we are saved by hope. But hope, that's it. So we are talking about hope. We are saved by hope. Since I'm saved by hope, then I'm saying my confidence will be in the worst scenario. Somebody comes and tells me, it's either this or the other. Then I'll say, if the other is Christ, then I go for Christ. And I'm talking about this knowing that all of us are going through challenges. You walk here on the streets, you're going to meet somebody who says, a few shillings, and you are, you are good to go. Then you ask, what is a few shillings for? Of course, it's a bribe. Give me. Then you say, I am born again, I'm born again, I feel free. That's born again, eh? The Bonham sang the song, I'm born again, I feel free. So, so you're able to show somebody? Of course, they don't look born again themselves. But, but here you are saying, I am born again for that reason. I am free. And because I'm free, I cannot participate in that. So I'm saying, therefore, we need to have so much confidence in God that any challenges that comes, we immediately uh, use the word of God. So obedience to God, therefore, should not fluctuate on circumstances. If I have a hope, of where I'm going, then my hope, then my confidence in him should not fluctuate. Uh, because, like the person said earlier, when I look when I look down, I am depressed. I look aloud, I'm oppressed. But then he continued, he ended up by saying, But when you look up, I am blessed. Praise the Lord. Psalms 121. I look up to the hills. Where does the help come from? But this is from the Lord. And then Psalm 52, 5 and verse 22. Maybe you can have that one. Psalm 55 and verse 22 as our last one. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So I'm saying, therefore, my confidence and my faith and my hope, all of this should be on Christ and nowhere else. And therefore, with that one, we said, since my ultimate hope is the glory to be revealed, then anything else is just a small thing compared with where I'm going. Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' name and his righteousness. Let's start up and do that verse again. Just that verse. Mrs. Simon and Miss. <clears throat> so we do that verse again. 
as invite our level to come and conclude for us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On cross of solid broken stairs. Our loving God and the Father, indeed we confess that you alone are the anchor. You alone are the foundation on which we stand. We thank you, Lord, that from the beginning of this service, you have kept us reminded that you are the solid rock on which if we establish our hope, then the things that are happening around us, we can be patient. My Lord, I want to pray as we have been told. And indeed, many of us are going through various tribulations. I pray that your grace will abound. Your grace that strengthens us. Your grace that keeps us strong, O oh God, to endure and to reveal our hope and our faith in you. I pray that as James would tell us, O oh God, we count it pure joy when we go through trials of many kinds, because these trials will gradually lead us into being mature, able to lack nothing. I pray, Father, that we may have this right perspective that knows that challenges only come to improve us. I pray for anyone among us, Lord, who might have been overtaken and imagined that this situation was only there to torture them, to make them hopeless, that my Father and my God, the tides will change and our confidence will grow that we are being refined to be affirmed and confirmed that we are truly your children. I thank you and I bless you, O oh God. Thank you that we have a hope that does not disappoint. We have a hope that is established in you. We have a hope that is anchored on the right foundation. Thank you, Lord. Maybe before we finish this prayer, you're here, and Christ is not your foundation. Christ is not your anchor. As we talk about hope, Indeed, you know that you can't claim to be a beneficiary of the same. Can I pray with you if you desire to give your hope in Jesus? You want to receive Christ as your Lord, that he can be your hope. Just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. Anyone? Let Christ anchor your hope because all other options are not reliable. Anyone? And so, loving God and Father, we thank you for your people. Lord, we have received your word. I pray that as we go forth, our hope is rekindled. If there be any of us who was challenged in any way, my Father, and wondering what are you saying, my Lord, may this message be clear that you are working out and perfecting patience through the challenges we are going through. And this patience will give us experience because we will discover that we can survive through it furthermore because our God will keep us afloat. And may that experience therefore lead us to that hope that God is always reliable. We thank you, Lord. As we look into the week ahead of us, may you strengthen us. May you build us up, O oh God. And may you lead us in the way everlasting. Watch over your people, my Father. Yes, as we go through the turns and the twists, may you be with us. 
to hold our hand and to preserve us in it all. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine over you and to keep your hope alive. Amen. Uh, there was an announcement about family care. Family care basically referred to the married people. Uh, please remember that you have a meeting. Uh, this should have been an open forum, really, as we talk about how to take care of our parents. But again, I've not been given permission. So uh, couples, uh, married people, uh, please make sure that you locate the class. And let's learn more. Reverend will be continuing uh, releasing the grace the Lord has put upon him as we learn on how to be a blessing to, be our, to our parents. God bless you. Those who are going for baptism, tujichangamushe maze. Baridi, tutayeka kando msijali. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Have a great week. Asante.